Hello everyone, welcome back. So, I'm going to fast forward just a little bit because we did Andrew Jackson. Um, we'll go to there. This is part four. What is making that sound? Ow. That was me. Okay. Whatever it is. Oh, it's that. Okay. We're good now. My chair rocks back. Kate Batts is back there, waiting to possess somebody. Chuck E. Cheese over here, ready to defend anyone. And now they're going to talk on Martin Van Buren, our eighth president, total nerd. I don't know much about Van Buren, other than uh, he, uh, Andrew Jackson really relied on him. He was the vice president his second term. Other than that, I mean, I know a little bit here and there, but not a whole lot. Takes over. Mm -hmm. He takes over a completely destroyed economy because he vetoed the bank. That's the that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. cool guys. Yeah. America is made of cowboys and nerds. So yeah. you got cowboys who show off and who show what kind of people we are, and then you have nerds who actually get things done. But the cowboys get the credit. Yeah. And then the nerds get fucked every he time. He got fucked. His nickname was Van Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He had a lot of nicknames. <laughs> They're like, Old Kinderhook. His... He yeah. was another total nerd, and everybody hated Van Buren. He was like a little fucking... Yeah. He just, was supposed yeah. to be, I think, he was one of those vice presidents that was supposed to be a link. Like, because Jackson was the man yeah. in the South, kind of, or wherever, mm -hmm. and they were like, let's get this dork to... He was know. from uh, he was Kinderhook, Pence. New York. He was his pent. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, Trump's yeah. pent. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, the, the the legend is that you know he was one of the first people to have uh, um, pamphlets like a lot of pamphlets like the, the press like the mass press started to get big so his pamphlet was because he was called Old Kinderhook because he's from Kinderhook New York so his thing was okay and it was oh, a check mark oh nice and that's where people say that okay comes from what. Yeah, because it was like his thing was you okay with a check mark? That was the point. It was like vote for old Kinnerhook. That's well, the thing. That's the thing. When you look into this, the I don't know if that's true or not. But if it is, it's news to me. Where all of our shit comes from? Yeah, that's nuts. It's all of this. All right, well, we got to speed up because this one's funny. Van Buren sucked. Whatever. Yeah, yeah he's his. Here comes Harrison. He's the next guy. Everybody called him Old Granny because he was too much of a geezer to run. So on his inauguration, he was like. I'm going to prove to everyone how tough I am. Yeah. It was freezing cold and raining. He had like an 8,000-word inauguration. Yeah. <laughs> he got a pneumonia and died. <laughs> he died. He was uh, <laughs> like a few months. He died. He, he lived. Stop. 33 to 36 days, I think. That was all it was. He, uh. He was the, actually, during the War of 1812, he's the one who went after Tecumseh and killed him. He himself didn't kill him. Um, but he, he was kind of the military guy at first. And they called him, well, uh, his people called him, I want to say Washington of the West, you know, trying to get that attachment. But then he had some problems with um, his upper people, and he just resigned from the military. He had a guy, uh, William Henry Harrison had a guy uh, who, who was underneath him. Oh, I wish I... Damn, I, I apologize. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the name, and then I will unpause it. Bear with me. I'll be right back. Okay. So, after about five minutes, um, I did find out William Henry Harrison uh, died of pneumonia, they said. It's, uh, it was entric fever, which is typhoid fever, is what he ended up getting. Um, the person that I was thinking of was Ed, uh, Lieutenant... Uh, Edmund Pendleton Gaines, Edmund P. Gaines, G-A-I-N-E-S for the last name, was a career United States Army officer who served for nearly 50 years and attained the rank of Major General 
by Brevet. Um, I bring him up, unrelated, much like they brought up um, Benjamin Franklin. It's all right. Just, you know, brains going away. So, Lieutenant Gaines served with William Henry Harrison in the War of 1812. And I don't remember the battle. I read the book called Tippy Canoe, um, which is about William Henry Harrison. And Tippy Canoe was the battle, I believe, where William Tecumseh, William Tecumseh Sherman, Tecumseh, the Native American, that's where he was killed. And I believe that battle was in Michigan or Canada. I think more Canada. But the um, Tippy Canoe ended up being the slogan for William Henry Harrison's um, presidential thing. It was Tippy Canoe and Tyler too, because John Tyler was the vice president. So there you go. Let that ring in your head for a little bit. Just sit around your house and go, Tippy Canoe and Tyler too, and just really piss people off. Oh, it's great. So Edmund P. Gaines, Edmund Pendleton Gaines, served under William Henry Harrison. And I don't remember the battle, like I said. So, as it's told, Gaines is um, looking over all... Uh, they're in a camp. Native Americans attack the camp before, you know, ambushed them. And so the Americans are getting in position, and they're returning fire, and they're loading up. And Edmund P. Gaines walks by, and he gets shot. He got shot, I want to say... Like right here, somewhere in this range. I read the book like five years ago, so I apologize. So he gets shot and he's walking past all the tents and there's like two or three American soldiers who are just standing there and they're froze. They just don't know what to do. They're just, and they see him and he walks by and he goes, you gotta, you know, you gotta fight. What are you doing? fight and they're like oh yeah, yeah he goes where's the doctor and they're like uh the doctor's in that we, we last saw him over there but we're not sure so he goes walking down to the doctor's tent and he opens it up and he walks in as soon as that tent flap closes three native americans run around and they see the tent flap close so they charge inside they're hooting and hollering there is the sound of struggle a gunshot goes off, then followed by another gunshot, then followed by hooting and hollering abruptly stopping. And Edmund P. Gaines comes walking out, holding a Native American by the throat, raising him up off the ground, walking out and strangles this man, and then like slams him down and crushes his throat or something like that. He's been shot, he's been stabbed. He went into that tent without a weapon. He was shot and stabbed. And he killed one man with his bare hand, just like snapped his neck. Took another tomahawk that just missed him. Just opened up a guy's skull. And then the last guy, he was just like, oh, I'm going to have fun with you. Because that guy shot him. And he was like, yeah, I'm really going to have fun with you. So he just choked that man unconscious and then crushed his windpipe and killed him. Then he turned around and looked at the, the two, three guys who had just witnessed the Native Americans running in the tent, and they're like, oh no, you know, the second command's dead. They hear all that, and they're getting ready to, you know, they've got their guns, and they're shaking, and they're, they're going to shoot now. And he comes out, and he just looks at him, and he goes, what are you doing? You know, get to the, the defense. What are you doing? And so they just start panicking. They don't know where to go, and he just walks past him, and he goes, I'm going to find the doctor, and he just kept on walking. And they were just like, uh, uh, so then they went into a panic and I just think that's a great story. It's just a crazy story, but that's, you know, but William Henry Harrison had that man underneath him and Edmund P. Gaines, um, later went on to be the guy who arrested Aaron Burr. I don't remember if that was before or after. But anyways, so if you know who Aaron Burr is, uh, 
Thomas Jefferson's first vice president. He killed Alexander Hamilton. I, I think I discussed that on the previous one of the previous ones. That I recorded the other ones yesterday, so I'm kind of I'm going to shut up now. Not immediately, like shortest yeah. term. Died. Damn. Shortest term. Never immediately. had. A, didn't have a minute of acting as president. Trying to prove he was tough. Got sick the first day. Awesome. <laughs> died immediately. And awesome. died a few months later. <laughs> what? Yep. Uh, G. That brings us to Tyler. He did nothing. <laughs> Tyler was. John Tyler. He gets crap. But John Tyler. So. I think I already went over this before on, on the other video. On one of the others, I, I do apologize. John Tyler was instrumental in a presidential death. The vice president succeeds. 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 He takes over, whatever the proper word was. He takes over. So, um, the people in the cabinet, which was led by, um, I'm I'm just garbage for names right now. Henry Henry Clay. So, Alexander. Uh, Am I dying? Is this what death is? So, let's try this again. Andrew Jackson hated uh, Henry Clay because Henry Clay got the presidency to, um, gave it to John Quincy Adams and then accepted a spot in his cabinet. Henry Clay is one of those people, if you look back in American history, he's somebody who everyone said, you know that Henry Clay? He'd make a damn good president. Henry Clay would make a damn good president. And then election time came around and they were like, yeah, I'm going to vote for this guy, but next time I'm going to vote for Henry Clay. And then the next election comes around and they're just like, well, I'm going to keep rolling with this guy. Or they looked at the options and they were like, you know what? This is Henry Clay's time. Next time I am going to, I'm going to try this guy. Look, it, we, you know, Henry Clay, he's going to get his time. That was Henry Clay. He's going to get his time. He never got his time. Um, but Henry Clay was in the cabinet and John Tyler finds out William Henry Harrison's died and I, I apologize if I said this in one of the other previous videos uh, I'll repeat it because I love it John Tyler goes up, this is Sunday Henry Clay and all these other Whig cabinet people, that was the, the political party, I'm not just throwing out the, you know, they had wigs that was the political party so they're all like, okay we're going to run the presidency collectively and you be the vice president. And John Tyler told them after listening to him, he's like, tomorrow I'm going to show up. I'm going to move my stuff into the, the president's office and I will assume the presidency and I will accept the resignation of anyone who does not want to be a part of my cabinet. I, we were elected. Tippy Canoe and Tyler too, right? He was elected. They were selected. They didn't want to be there. They didn't have to be. He could replace him. But he was going to be the president. John Tyler at number 10 set the standard because no, it had never been done. How do we figure this out? No one knew. John Tyler gets crap because, as they said, he didn't do anything. No, he did, but he didn't. What he did was told the Whig party, I'm the president of all the people. And this is something that we today should look back on. Instead, we trash him, but this is something we should all look back on and say, this is what we want. He didn't want to be the party, the, the president of the Whigs and give the Whigs everything they wanted and screw over Democrats or this or that. No, he was the president of everyone. So when the Whigs showed up and they're like, this is good for Whig policy, blah, blah, blah. He vetoed it. And he said, you're looking at, let's say, 30 million people when there's, a, you know, 60 million people. Don't take those numbers as accurate. But he was like, I'm not going to serve half the people. That's not what we do. And the Whigs got so mad because they thought they could use him as a puppet. And they found out he wasn't going to be used as a puppet. In the meantime, Andrew Jackson's getting all the Democrats around. And he's saying, look, his own party hates him. Let's work with him. Andrew Jackson's already out of the presidency. He's out of politics, but he is kind of just like Trump. He's the man still wielding power for his party. So he makes Democrats work with him and throw bones in there for Whigs. You know, 
really help a wig out, but at the same time, it is, you know, more democratic type of policy. John Tyler worked with them, changed things here and there, worked with things. The Whigs refused to work with him and ended up kicking him out of his own party. And this is where the mind of Jackson comes into place because Jackson really leaned on him and was like, you know, you could be a Democrat. You really could. The party loves you. The people love you. Then it came time for his, what would have been his re-election, John Tyler's. And he was like, I think I'm going to switch because you knew the Whigs didn't want him. The Whigs were going to put up someone else. He's like, I think I'm going to switch parties. And Andrew Jackson was like, you're damaged goods. Democrats don't want you. Like really got him to do what they wanted. And then was like, no, the party doesn't want you. We don't want you. You're not needed here. You're no good. You're not, you're not a Democrat. Really just destroyed him. And John Tyler left politics. I, I want to say... I, I want to say he still stayed involved with politics, but I don't know how much. But, and I, I've said this before, he had a kid when he was in his 70s, like 74. That son had a, had a kid when he was like 77. That son, now the grandson of John Tyler, was still alive in 2010. John Tyler died in like 1840-something. So just think about that. I'm going to shut up now. I do apologize, but I love talking presidents. I'm drinking iced tea, uh, by the way. His General, party abandoned right? him. No, oh, no. It Taylor. He was Harrison's vice president. So oh, Harrison dies. Him. The one thing he did do was set the precedent that the vice president yep. stays as president. Nice. So everyone was like, "What? we don't know what to do here. The president's never died. Do you take over as an interim guy mm. until we find a new guy? And he was like, no, I'm just the president. I'm the president. And enough that his party hated him for that. So they were they his own party abandoned him. They didn't Why? put him up for real election. because well, they thought they should they to choose put, another guy. They wanted to be able to put another guy. A stronger guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. So he stayed. He had n no party's support. They wanted to choose a stronger guy, a.k.a. Henry Clay wanted to be the president by proxy. And then when it was time to run, Henry Clay wanted to say, well, look what I've done. And keep the Whigs in power. This was his last real stronghold chance to get uh, elected president. And Henry Clay had sway over his party and when john tyler didn't want to play ball they got rid of him supported him he got nothing done he was never up for re-election again it must have been awkward that brings us to our guy though this is who i wanted to get to what? polk dude turns out polk's the man really yeah dude. i know nothing about polk no he I was love one polk. term because he was a dark horse out of nowhere and he promised every that's a book by the way uh, the dark horse candidate and he considered himself a candidate he was a speaker of the house and um, Andrew Jackson, he was he was uh, looked up to Jackson. Jackson was kind of a mentor because his family's from Columbia, Tennessee, and Jackson moved to just north of Nashville. He, uh, Polk, Polk was Speaker of the House, and Jackson told him, "Well, I don't know if it was Jackson, but I'll say Jackson." Ja basically, Jackson said, "Hey, look." Speaker of the House doesn't really go anywhere. So Polk, I don't know if they'll cover it, but Polk dropped out of Speaker of the House, tried to run for like governor of Tennessee, didn't make it. Then I think that guy died and Polk tried it again, didn't make it. And he's just sitting there going, well, now what do I do? And Martin Van Buren had lost to William Henry Harrison and John Tyler and they thought well we'll put Van Buren back up and James K. Polk can be the vice president and Van Buren was like I don't want that guy he's a loser he was a he was a speaker of the house no succeed no no way to succeed there and he he was a failed attempt at governor of Tennessee I don't want that guy he's garbage he's not a winner and so Andrew Jackson, of course, just pulling those strings, just sits back and goes, why don't you just run? And James K. Polk's like, for president? And he goes, yeah, you'd be a dark horse candidate. You run. No one knows you enough to hate you. And back in this time, 
because Washington at number one did two terms. Jefferson at number three did two terms. Madison at four did two terms. Um, Monroe at five did two terms. Jackson at seven did two terms. People were looking at it like, and then you had you had two terms with Adams' father and son. You know, they each had one term each. So you, people are looking at it like the William Henry Harris, uh, Van Buren only had um, one term because of the the collapse of the the economy. William Henry Harrison dies. John Tyler's there. They didn't know what to do. So Martin Van Buren was like, I'm going to slide right on back in. And Jackson had started to sour on Van Buren. So he just told him, just run. We'll back you. And he did. And people were looking around going, Van Buren? No. Henry Clay? All the time this guy runs. Don't we have anyone else? James K. Polk interesting and that was how the people treated it there were other names but people were just like henry clay's always running martin van buren we've seen what he can do but then polk stepped in and said i have four things that i want to accomplish and i only need one term i won't run again and henry clay and all those people were starting to pioneer that idea so that more people could become president and so everyone kind of looked at each other and were like, we'll hold you to that standard. If you are going to do uh, one term, we will all back you. Because four years is, is much different than an eight-year cycle. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Everybody in his party, I'll only do one term. That way, some of yep. you guys that are good, that are getting ready, you can take over. I yeah. promise to do one term. When he was running, his opponent's slogan was, who is James K. Polk? Yeah. Like, people were talking shit. Oh, and uh, uh, Andrew Jackson also convinced him to marry his wife. Oh, I don't remember her name, but I'm look I have a magnet with her face on it. It's just her, but right next to it is a magnet of just James K. Polk, okay? I kept them together on my refrigerator. Oh, I don't remember her name. I want to say it was Rachel, but then again, Rachel, I, I kind of just throw that name out for everyone. What's George Washington's middle name? I don't know. Rachel? That sounds good. That's just what I do. But anyways, James K. Polk was not a... He wasn't somebody you were going to walk up and strike a conversation with. You'd walk up and be like, hey, how you doing? He'd be like, huh? Ah, yeah. Yeah? I, I don't know what that means. Like, he didn't know how to interact with people very well. But... The wife, who Jackson was like, you need to marry her. You marry her, she'll take care of all the stuff that you don't want to do. She'll interact with people, she'll do this, she'll do that. Yeah. As soon as he got in, oh, this is good. He was a tiny guy. He was 5'8", mm, which was like... That's really small. Yeah, he was 5'8", and when he got in, his wife was the one who came up with, they got to play Hail to the Chief every time you come in a room. To give you some respect. Give him a look. He could, he could just walk, as I said, he, he didn't know how to interact with people. So he could just walk in and people were like, hey, Mr. President. And he'd be like, do, 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 do. And so she was like, no. No, no, no. When people address you, it shouldn't be just in passing like, hey, Mr. President, how you doing? High five. All right. No, she wanted it. She wanted respect put on his name. So every time he was going to come into a room and she saw, she signaled and they started playing what would become Hail to the Chief every time he walked in. And it became synonymous like, oh, the president's here. And people, you know, perked up and showed some respect for who he was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's why that happens. Nice. Um, <laughs> so right away, Polk starts going but wild. But it was kind of a joke. It's like if a midget walked in. It's just a little guy. No, Polk's a beast. Immediately, he starts fucking with the British about Oregon. So they have the Oregon territory yeah. out there, which is just beaver hunting. Everybody's mm. you know, beaver hunting. <laughs> We're doing a little bit of what that in Nash Vegas. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, trying to get pussy. About pussies. Be beaver hunting, he means like beaver pelts he's you know he's not referring to actually sex Oregon the trappers and everything like that that's what he's talking about just in case hunting in Oregon for they were they were in Oregon 
pussy Oregon hunting. pussy hunting. So the British were pussy hunting. <laughs> the British and Americans were both pussy hunting on the same territory. Beaver Polk was like, nah, we're done with that. And he said alleged, the, the latitude and longitude was 54 and 40. So he came out with the slogan, 54 and 40, or fight. He was saying that to the British. He was like, we're going to fuck catchy. you guys up. True. So he came out with that. And the British. People were really in, into they loved latitudes slogans. and longitudes. They were. Then. So he called that. And the British were afraid to call his bluff. They were just. So it, it wasn't just afraid to call the bluff. Where's England or the UK? Sorry. It would be east of the US. Where's Oregon? West Coast. In order for a fight to have happened and for uh, the UK, England, whatever, to have defended Oregon. They would have had to have supplied troops there. They would have had to sail all the way around to go to Oregon or go over to um, Canada or go into, you know, actual try an invasion of America. And I think at this point, they were just like, these guys, these guys with their raccoon hats, like we're just, I'm, I'm done with, now they want to fight. And we were in a much better position now, more established government. And they were just like, these guys, just let's leave them alone. Like they were just done. Like fine, take Understandable. it. Understandable. slogan is so good. Yeah, like, just <laughs> take it off, dude. dude. This guy's too nuts. Dude, you came up with the fucking, you used the longitude and latitude? So he takes that territory, which is huge. And then it's not just Oregon, it's Washington and all that. I also believe that Polk set the latitude and longitude for the border with Canada. That's why it's it's like a little on the west coast, like a little doo -doo -doo -doo, but then it's pretty much straight. And then the Great Lakes and all that stuff. But yeah, it was he was he set the the I believe. You know how why Oregon is uh, Portland is called Portland? Mm. I bet you I do. It was kind of do you? No, it's not. It was going to be Boston. What? Because these two guys, is it Lewis and Clark? That yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. one of them is from... That was Jefferson. Just one of them is from that. Boston, and one of them is from Portland, Maine. And they both wanted to name it after their hometown. Oh. And they flipped a coin huh. and named it Portland. And there is a Boston in Oregon. Mm. There's a town called Boston in Oregon. Anyway, hmm. go on. So after he gets to Oregon, yeah. he's, he's like, all right, it's time for me to get Texas. Mm -hmm. He starts fucking with the Mexicans. John Tyler actually made the first step to annexing Texas, and he did it because he knew that that's what the Democrats were wanting to do, and that's what Andrew Jackson was kind of wanting to do, and so he made that first step, hoping that Democrats would be like, yeah, 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 hey, let's just keep him in office and vote for him. It was a, a last attempt but it didn't work. They, the Democrats, didn't want him in office. But they wanted that. I, they, you know, they followed through with that idea. Like, say so they would send troops down mm -hmm. just to see if the Mexicans would shoot first. Yep. Mm -hmm. Finally, they did. He fucking immediately lazy Mexicans. They, finally, they <laughs> shot so a bunch many of times. <laughs> he, he get off their fucking frijoles and <laughs> fire a shot. Uh, I don't know if he's going to bring it up, but I'll wait. Uh, I'll wait. I'll okay. So they they go to war. Here they come again. I don't want to fire. Two fire lads. Probably one of them was like <laughs> seventy thousand troops poured in. Oh no! So the, we immediately took California, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Texas. And this then is who is the general? Who is the general that penetrated all the way to Mexico City? That this is later, right? Uh, this was the next guy who was. Um. Zachary Taylor was one of the military guys. Oh, I'm going I'm sorry. I'm looking it up. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to look it up. The guy's nickname was Old Fussin' Feathers. Okay. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. It's about a minute. Uh Winfield Scott uh, was the American Oh, that's my phone right in my hand. Uh, was the American military commander and political candidate. Um, 
He served from 1814 to 1861, taking part in the War of 1812 and the Mexican-American War, and he pretty much retired uh, at the start of the Civil War because he was too fat to ride a horse. There you go. It was, uh, Zachary Taylor? Yeah, yeah Zachary, Zachary Taylor was Zachary the big uh, Mexican-American war Yeah, guy. he was the warrior. What? Zachary Taylor was dominating. They but gathered- is, he went into Mexico City, and, the, and if you go to in Mexico City... The big thing is Los Niños, these six, I think it's four, six kids. Yeah. So they stormed, they went all the way to Mexico City, and the Citadel, the, the um, Chapultepec, the palace, uh, the army was so decimated that it was finally just the cadets of the military school were the only ones nice. defending the capital. And they were, fi- they were just four kids firing on the American army is just coming. And they finally, they wrapped themselves in Mexican flags and jumped and dove and killed themselves. That was how they ended That's the pretty war. Awesome. And the moment is Zachary Taylor was holding one of them and he was saying they were just kids. Uh, like he had no idea they were, they were like fucking 12, 15 years oh, old. Oh, man. Um, Harry Truman. Now, the, the Mexican-American war was... Eight, 1848 to 1850. Um, but Harry Truman, president after uh, FDR died, after World War II, he went and visited Mexico. Uh, I don't remember why. You know, pr- presidents do that. Uh, visited Mexico, but he went to that citadel and he laid a wreath and said something to the effect, like all these people showed up, and he said something to the effect of these kids, uh, you know, what happened here was a tragedy. These kids should have never have died. I understand why they were they were shooting, but had the Americans realized that they were boys, nothing they would, you know, they wouldn't have been killed. They would have. You know, weapons would have been ripped out of their hand, and they would have been scolded, you know, taken as prisoners. But they would have not received any kind of harsh treatment. But unfortunately, you know, and Zachary Taylor pretty much just was holding one of these boys, realized that he was a kid, and you know, you, you they wouldn't have tried to take that out on them. Clearly, you know, they, they were cadets. They were wanting to be in the military. They were doing what they thought was right. And it, you know it was they're defending their home, but unfortunately, you know, and it's a big stain in uh, Mexico City today. Like it's a, it really is a sad thing. And in Me- in Chapultepec, there's four big pillars uh, mm. that are still they're like hey, war heroes. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. What did Mexico have back then? Like, a, was it like a king or like a lot what? of they? Oh well, they had Max. So uh, the what was going on all these years, um. Santa Napoleon Indiana. assumed that the South would win the Civil War eventually. That the South, that there would be, a, they, the Europe always bet, bet on the South because mm. the South was was a uh, aristocratic mm. America. It was about plantations and old families, and that's a European. They, and they loved Europe in the South. Yeah. The North was always against Europe and wanting to start something new. So during the Civil War. So Maximilian was just a Habsburg. But the way kings worked back then, there were some royalty factories. So the Habsburg family, who I think were like Flemish or whatever the yeah. fuck, they just were, had like somebody, a cousin of a king. They went, Maximilian and his wife, they're like, you guys take Mexico. You're, you're, so so yeah. Napoleon sent French troops to Mexico and in, installed Max uh, Maximilian, but then the which is what Cinco de Mayo is. Yes, uh. and then so then the 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 Mexicans finally uh, overran because when we lost the Civil War, when the, when we lost the Civil War, <laughs> 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 maybe, oh, no. what made me say that? <laughs> no, when the when, <laughs> when the South <laughs> lost the Civil War, Napoleon was like, all right, fuck this. Well, and wait, Napoleon just, was gone for this. Or whoever war. the French yes. pulled their yes. pulled their. Uh, well, there was like three uh, Napoleons. Oh, oh true. Right. I think it was uh, a later Napoleon. Wow. Uh, yes, pulled uh, support. Yeah, and Maximilian um, 
Uh, they beheaded him. Fuck. They fed peyote to his wife what? and sent her home. And there's some little village somewhere in like uh, the Netherlands where they tell you like she's going to come get you because she would run in the streets. She went insane. She what? would run the streets screaming. Fuck. And they tell kids if you don't get to sleep because she comes out at night. If you don't go to sleep, she's going oh to come get God. you. So yeah, that's, how far, that's how far in Mexico. Dude, they, I'm sorry to derail you. No, but so, no, that's so Zachary, so you were still at Polk no, and then Taylor. Polk, but still. So one, uh, real fast. Mexico had Santa Ana, um, famous, where his uh, Mexican troops wiped out the Americans at the uh, the Alamo. What I was going to say was, when the war with I was going to say it earlier, but I said I would wait. The, when the war with Mexico first happened, a young upstart Illinois uh, congressman named Abraham Lincoln, in like his first act asked Polk and the whole Congress where were the first shots fired or where were the the Americans that were killed uh, where did they where what land did they die on Mexican or American land because everyone now knows and it was thought then they didn't go down to the border of Mexico and then just stand there the Americans crossed in with the intent to start a war. Mexico, defending their territory, shot. And the Americans were like, oh, they shot first. They started the war. Well, yeah, they started the war because you're you're like 200 yards past into their territory. So yeah, but Abraham Lincoln did it. And Polk and the whole Democratic Party did what it, still they do today. His response was, oh, you don't support the troops. And everyone was looking at Lincoln like, what, what, what? You don't support troops? What? What? How could you? And Lincoln's like, that's not what I said. Let's focus on what I did say. Where did the bodies land? And they were like, no, he didn't support the troops. And so Lincoln's argument got thrown out because how dare he question the troops? He never questioned the troops. But it just shows how sometimes how stupid the argument can turn. One thing that was cool was when Polk was instigating this war with Mexico. You got to uh, cut that part where I say we lost. <laughs> no, that's good. That. I don't that's know good. You corrected it immediately. <laughs> this is pretty sick. So Polk was up there like they're fucking with us. They they shot at our troops. A nice old an old one term senator from Illinois oh, okay. stood up and said, "Were we on their territory when we shot them?" There was one guy that was opposed to the Mexican American War. A guy by the name of Abraham Lincoln. Really, and, Abraham Lincoln. And people yes. were like, "Hey, shut up, pussy!" <laughs> yeah, dude. We're trying to take Texas. Shut yeah. the fuck and he's up. He's like, oh, "You guys, were we?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's <laughs> like, "Sorry." <laughs> yeah, I think this was wrong. Like, anyway, that's why Polk's kind of the man. He he added one third of the entire United States in a four year term. Damn, pretty good. Well, in territory, I know, but still, but still, it's like those big. Yeah, but you got Texas and California, and they were pretty just sitting probably on the, half our population. Pretty good. And they're sitting. I on the wish border. he hadn't added them. <laughs> Especially Texas. The but again, then there we went. Like, Mexico sucks. Yeah. Mexico fucking yeah. sucks. <laughs> Just go, go, go. Oh shit, run, run, run. They're pissed. Yo, Mexico's gay. <laughs> uh, again, that was a smashing. We, America destroyed Mexico. Yeah. It was mean. It was mean. Yeah, it was nice. um, then, this is good. Polk, he was working his tail off. His tail. Huh? He was tired. He got he was he was so exhausted when he got done. He went back to Tennessee and just died, like right away, right? Yeah, he died, yeah. <laughs> it was I want to say within six months. Yeah, he was a workaholic. They said that he would be in his office like eighteen to twenty hours. He just that's just who he was. <laughs> he was like that was too much. I should have done a lot all that. of work. <laughs> yep, just died. So then comes Zachary Taylor. This is 1849 to 1850. That's a quick term. Uh, old, rough, and ready. Yeah. Pretty sick nickname. Old, dead, and... Yeah, he's, old, he's about to be dead. <laughs> yeah, he died. I don't remember what he died of. He was a... Just being in the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. Milk and cherries. He was one of the largest slaveholders in the South. So when he got elected, the South was, like, nice. Because at this point, the, the territories, he just added... Polk did all that in four years, which was sick. But it also... It was too much. Because mm. now there's so much territory... And the slaves versus the abolitionists debate. Every state they had to add. There was a debate. 
Uh, there's a debatey. Um, All southern presidents. So many southern presidents. Yeah. I mean, outside of the Adamses. Pretty much nonstop Virginia. Yep. And then it gets into, like, Tennessee and... They yeah. started digging into their their bench was not yeah, they good enough. To Tennessee, dude. And then we started kind of with Ohio. We started coming back. Yeah. Huh. Um, actually, kind of northern presidents tended to suck. Lincoln ruled. Yeah, but he was well. He was Kentucky, uh, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Illinois before Kentucky. Kentucky. Which, which I always state forget one. I think he. I think he was born. In- he was born in Kentucky. Moved to Indiana. Crossed over uh, in Vincennes, Indiana which is the same location of William Henry Harrison's governor's mansion, the one I'm going to go visit, uh, which I've already been to. And it's also right next to what was Fort Sackville, which is where, as they talked about Lewis and Clark, uh, William Clark's older brother, um, George Rogers Clark, took over that fort. George Rogers Clark, he was no joke. Straight up frontier man. You know, Daniel Boone. Um, he was like one of those guys. He was he was a psychopath. Um, Zachary Taylor's home. Uh, you can't go to it today. It's it's privately owned, still in use. The home is original. The there are still slave plant uh, like homes on the on the farm. Uh, it's all original. The people wanted to put it. And on the historical landmark status and the this makes no sense the historical landmark community came reached out to them and said okay this is what you need to do demolish all the the, the barns the slave homes uh, destroy all of them to only leaving the home on the property then we'll swing in we'll stamp it with the historical landmark thing and then we will rebuild the slave homes and all this other stuff that's destroyed well why can't you just take it as it is because then it's not a historical landmark it's just a place but we can we can we can stamp it historical landmark if we need to preserve the home and if all the other stuff is destroyed then we need to preserve the home how about you just preserve preserve all of it? What are, you, what are you talking about? In Kentucky, in a log cabin in Kentucky. And then he was the, <laughs> then Illinois, he was the then Illinois. Then he moved to Illinois. Yeah. Who fucking knows? There's yeah. no way to know. We weren't right about Nobody half will these. Ever know we were never we correct mean. about half these facts, but we're having fun. Oh, yeah. I, I could be. I'm just. I love yeah, just acting like I know. It's great. <laughs> uh, so one thing, Taylor gets in there. Everybody's like nice. Everybody in the South's like nice. This guy's pro-slavery. He gets in. He tends to start actually leaning towards uh standing with the north this is all leading to the civil war because like guys like this start fucking this up as soon as he says we're going to establish or abolish slave in the western territories uh south carolina says they're going to succeed taylor says he's going to fucking hang everybody down there if they do it what <laughs> yeah he didn't react well to yeah stuff. no <laughs> he wasn't like let's talk and send it yeah, over he, was there. Like, he would just say you. that and then they're like are you and he's like well no but I'm gonna hang a lot. <laughs> problem with tough talk. <laughs> yeah. This is this is how he died. What did he do? So he went, this is his By first doing a term. Podcast about. <laughs> All right, go ahead. How did he die? He went to Washington D.C. for Independence Day and he ate too many cherries and milk. What? Because, <laughs> like I said, it was a swamp, so there was like a cholera outbreak. That was outbreak. like the old uh, pop oh. rocks and coke. Yeah, he had cherries and frosted <laughs> milk, and, and that was he it. exploded. <laughs> Um, Damn, it must have been by the way, you know though. how many pre- uh, there were uh, four presidents? Were, when you think about the fact that four of them were assassinated. Yeah, uh, four. Well, successfully. Yeah. So- I hear- Lincoln, Garfield, Lincoln at sixteen, Garfield at twenty, William McKinley at twenty-five, JFK at thirty-five. Four were killed, shot, yeah. shot and killed. Yeah. Four Wait. out of forty. There's been forty-seven presidents. Ten percent. Wait, hold on. How many got shot and killed? It was. I don't think they got shot and killed. Yeah, four were shot and killed. Uh, Gar- is it Garfield? 
See, this is where I, I stopped. A guy with you. a G. Gro- it's either Grover, Cleveland, or Garfield. One of those two was yeah, shot and killed. Garfield. Yeah. Uh, McKinley shot and killed. Mm-hmm. JFK and Lincoln. Nice. Four shot and killed. Reagan fucking close. Close. Badly shot. Yeah. Uh, 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 Roosevelt, Teddy, shot in the chest. Yes. Bull. Uh, but had a, 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 spe- a thick piece of paper with his speech Fuck, and a glasses so cool, case. Finish the speech. He um, was running for the Bull Moose Party. This would have been his third term. Um, it's the reason why William William Henry Harrison. It's the reason why Woodrow Wilson ended up making the the presidency number twenty eight. Roosevelt was twenty six. Um, William Howard, William Taft, William Howard Taft, took over after him. He did not like how Taft was going about doing things, so he wanted to run up against him, and he formed the Bull Moose Party. Took votes away from Republicans. Woodrow Wilson got in for twenty eight. Um, this assassination attempt was after his presidency. Still an assassination attempt. But, oh, real fast. He was shot in the chest. Finished giving his speech, like an hour. And then he finally said, well, I've you know lost enough blood. I better be off now. Teddy's awesome. Yep, finished the speech. Got shot and was like... Uh, <laughs> and somebody <laughs> shot at, at, at um, uh, Jack, Andrew Jackson. Yeah, you got and, and he uh, had a cane, and he beat the guy, beat the <laughs> shit out of the guy. I almost beat him to death. The guy pulled his gun, point blank range, pulled the trigger, didn't fire. I think he dropped that, pulled another gun, point blank range, pulled the trigger, nothing happened. And by then, Jackson, the shock of what had just happened, had wore off, and Jackson started beating him with his cane. Somebody walked over and picked up the gun and fired it in the air, and it went off. The guy shot shot him, and he just, get the fuck! It was right outside the, the Capitol. What? Like, by the big uh, pillars or whatever. Yeah. And he just beat the fucking <laughs> shit out of him. Dude shot him. He was in- insane. Old uh, Hickory. Were they yes. all crazed lone gunmen type things, or was it like... Yeah, most of them were crazy people. There's a few other guys that were shot at, that, yeah, that somebody sure. took shots at them, and uh, but that they didn't get hurt. Oh, what's his name? Uh, well, FDR, they killed the governor, right, who was sitting next to him. Somebody, a spray of bullets, and he wasn't hurt, but the governor sitting next to him was killed. Jesus. Governor of Georgia or Florida? I don't fucking know. Anyway, go on. But yeah, like (laughs) over 10, like 12% of them had been shot, have been shot. So it's an intense job. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's it takes. There's a good chance. It is like a higher rate than actual soldiers in war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It's probably. I guess so. I bet yeah. it is. It might That's be. fucked up. Yeah, because in like regular, like revolution shit, it's like 70,000 soldiers, 2,000 dead. What's crazy shit is like that, that. But before it used to be like when, you know. I don't, I don't know what just happened. Why did you pause? Unpause. You like uh, uh, what's his name, Alexander the Great, and whoever some kings used to lead heads of state used to lead charges, (laughs) they used to be the front horse, (laughs) like going right headlong into an army. That'd be nice to be a guy. A lot of Roman Roman guys did that, and jackpot, yeah, Yeah, fucking god, holy shit, he's coming right at me, he's coming right at me. Oh, I blew it, just some guy, (laughs) all right. So now we're at Fillmore, all right. I'm gonna pause it there at Fillmore. I love this. This is fun. I have so much fun doing doing stuff on presidents. I love it. Okay. We're going to end this here. Um, I th- I, did I say this was a donated request? You can donate too. There's a thanks button. Uh, you don't have to ask for me to react to videos. You can. I'll do them. They move to the top of the list. Uh, you can still request videos. They just take a little bit longer. Um, you can subscribe to the channel. If you like the stuff, um, give a thumbs up. That helps. That helps a lot. And if you want to give a thumbs down, you can. I have this new um, this new water pistol. You pump it, you know, like the super soakers. And I just filled it up with AIDS water. And I'm going to give you a good dousing right in the mouth. So, until next time, have a good day, have a good night.